Hi, this is Avar from Scrappy Mania, and today I want to show you how to create this um, frame. It's a shadow frame. It's done with one sheet of paper, and it's a perfect project if you want to do this with a group of friends, if you want to bring it to your church, or if you want to bring it to an event, or even have friends over, or whatever. If you want to sell this, I mean, you can easily hold classes and have a fee and they come out with this. It's very simple to do. Now I want to show you that how did I came about about making this. So I want to just go over that. So one of the things I went to my local craft store. It's not a big box store. And the lady there, she's very smart. She had something similar like this. Now it did not have the easel back. That's one of my ideas because I wanted a, a simple way that you can easily make it and display it. But she did have some suggestions of if you don't have an easel, you can always put a magnetic strip here for the refrigerator. You can always also use um, those Coke tabs and put it in the back with hot glue and put a little string and hang it up. There's a lot of ways that you can hang this up or display it. I chose to use an easel because I do have an easel die that I purchased some time ago by Tim Holtz. It was on sale in Hobby Lobby. So I do have that die and that's why I'm going to use for this. But imagine the possibilities. You don't need to have this die. You can easily do whatever you want to hang it. And um, she had this. She did not have the easel. She was just had something similar and it was against um, other products. Below it, she had the dies to make the frames, she had the stamps and everything that she used for her version. And I loved it, I fell in love. And I went ahead and got the dies, actually. Um, she got me so inspired that I went ahead and got the dies. Now the dies, what happens is, you create the frame, but it doesn't have a backing, it's just a frame. And you have to kind of get a piece of paper cut it out and then put it put the frame around the edges and then um, that will become your shadow box however I'm making this project for ladies at church you know they're, they're they're up there in ages they're retired some of them have some disability some of them their hands are not working that well um, some of them have some eye issues, you know, they cannot see very well. So I wanted to make it as simple as I could because my thinking is teaching them how to make the frame or just making the frame ahead of time, but then having them to do their artwork on a piece of flat paper and then taping that against a frame, it might be crooked. So I want them to be able to do this project without any failure so they wouldn't get frustrated. So... I loved, I did get the dies, as you can see, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to teach you how to do it without the dies. But I did get the dies. I love these dies. Now, with this one, you can make any size because, of course, there's no backing. You can make any size of frame that you want. With this one, the only size of frame that I can make is, um, let's measure this. I didn't even measure it. I just, I was so excited that I made this thing that I did not even measure how big this was. So this one measures 4 and 7 8 it looks like, by 7 and 7 8 okay? That's from side to side, but then the inside's a little smaller. The inside is 6 and 3 4 by four inches so four inches and six and three fourth that is what you can you the only thing you can work with you don't you cannot go um, make it bigger or smaller because you're using one piece of watercolor cardstock this measures nine by twelve so twelve by nine so that's what by the time you do all the scoring lines you fold it that's what you get you are with you're left with so this is really good for if you want anything bigger than that. And then I also got this Spellbinder die, which also makes a similar frame, as you can see there. And um, you can make any size with this one as well. So before I continue on, I want to go ahead and show you the, the, the products I use. Now, I don't advocate you to go in out and buy this stuff. 
look at what you have. You don't have to use paper flowers. You can use silk flowers. You can go to the dollar store, get those little silk flowers, use that in there. You can use the repurpose the leaves from those silk flowers for in there. So you can make it very economical. Um, I like to make my projects economical because when I bring them along to the ladies at church when we have craft day, I don't want them spending money. I don't charge them anything. I, pro I, I provide all the papers. I do everything ahead of time for them. I just want them to have fun and I don't want the issue of not being able to afford the class to be a hindrance for coming and, and fellowshipping with each other. I want them to be able to, to fellowship with each other and not have that burden that, okay, I got to pay for this stuff. So I like to make it as cheap as I can. So that's why I kind of use the Canson watercolor paper, 140 pound from Walmart. It's, you get a big pad. Let me show you the pad that you get. I mean, you get 30 sheets for like $5, five, I bought this, it was five something. And I buy, when I buy them, I buy a bunch of them because I know I'm gonna use it, use it up. So um, that's what I buy. The other thing that I buy is I have water, Crayola watercolor paints. You can get them at Amazon in bulk. And then I buy the bulk cheap color, um, paint brushes. So I don't make it very expensive for me so um, that's another idea that you may have. Now, um, the other thing you can do this and charge, if you, you can hold classes and you can charge for this, just have everything cut ahead of time. And I'll show you how, in the different stages, I'll show you how you can just pre-prep -pre -pre everything ahead of time. So the only thing they need to do is do the background, use hot glue to put, or glue. And this one, I just use regular glue. I did not use hot glue, but, um, I'm going to use hot glue with the next one, but I just use regular glue and put it in there. So you can even get cheap little glue. This I bought these bottles at the dollar store, I think. And then I just fill it up with Elmo glue. That's what I usually provide them. And I also got a bunch of little hot glue guns like this from Walmart. I bought a bunch of them. And I also give them that. Now, I, I have to be careful because I don't want the ladies to burn themselves. So a lot of times I just provide them this glue because I don't want any issues of any accidents or anything while we're doing our crafting. But um, that's what I did. And then um, it's very simple. So well, for that one, what I used was these boots because I, I asked for Christmas to get me the whole set from Susan Tierney. Um, she makes these wonderful three-dimensional flowers. She had a whole set that had a coffee pot, a regular pot, whatever, of these dyes. And so I went and asked for that for my, for my Christmas present and all the kids chip in and got me the whole set. So I'm very happy with that. So this is what I use, but I'm not gonna use that this time because I am going to use a dye that I purchased some time ago from, from Tim Holtz. I don't know if it's still available. I will put the link if you want in Amazon, but any kind of dye that you can use, or you can even download an image that looks like this and then cut it out and use it as a template. But this is the dye that I'm going to use for this project. The other thing, the other product that I'm going to use is this Heartfelt Creation. I got the flowering dogwood. I got the dyes to cut it out. I also purchased this. You can see how old this is. I mean, reuse your stuff. This is a long time ago. I think maybe it has a date. Let me see if it has a date. It doesn't have a date, but it's pretty old. So I'm going to use this vintage morning background precept die and you can even see the packaging they don't they don't package this this way they packages this is a new packaging so this is pretty old so I have the die and the stamp and then this is another one of those that I, I'm going to use some flowers so these are your tulips I have the die and the coordinating stamp and it was on sale I got it at a show a long time ago and um, so that was on sale so I'm using that the other thing that I'm using is my Anna Griffin for the foliage. 
I have this Anna Griffin foliage die, so I'm going to use this die and this smaller one for the background foliage um, because it looked very similar to what she had here. I like that fern kind of thing, and I wanted so I, I, I found what I had, so I don't have this one. It doesn't come with this die, that foliage, even though it should since it shows it, but it's not in this foliage, so I went ahead and do the best I could. I got some from Anna Griffin. That is what I'm going to use. The other thing I'm going to use for the background, because if you can see here, I love Faith saying, and this one says, Walk by Faith not by sight, and it fits perfect in the boot. It's nice and small. Perfect for my ladies at church. So that is what this is. This is from, oh no, I cut it out. Hampton Arts. This is Hampton Arts. Um, you can go on, if I find it on Amazon, I'll pull it in. It was made in 2016, so I don't know if it's still available. But it has a nice saying like sending you sending you sending you many and then you can put prayers. Um, you are in my prayers. Um, walk by faith, not by sight. His love never fails. With God all things is possible. And it has crosses. So I like the small little sayings for there. Sending you prayers. I don't know what your way, how you use that one. I don't know how you would use that phrase. But anyhow, this is what I'm going to use. I do have other ones here. This one is also um, Hero Arts. And it has things with prayers plus the die to coordinate. So that is what I'm going to use. So, um, the other thing is... When you do your project, cut a bunch of flowers ahead of time. Have it all ready for them. They don't, you know, um, that way the project will be a lot quicker. Instead of spending six hours trying to teach it, it will be an hour. So I usually like to make my classes no more than an hour, hour and a half. Um, they tend to talk. They tend to eat. So it, goes, it spills over over an hour. But... When they do the projects, no long, no more than an hour. I went ahead and cut all my flowers and my leaves. So usually what I like to do is I have these trays. I put all the flowers on each of the tables. These are from the dollar store. And then they just pick and choose. So that's how I prefer to do my stuff. And then these are other little flowers. I also will bring these along because um, whenever I have scraps, I go ahead and create I have punches and I go ahead and spend the time creating three-dimensional flowers for any little project I want also I have this McGill giant butterfly that I'm going to use for I like to always put something like a butterfly or um, dragonfly or even a ladybug I will use those and put it on on the frame okay and this is the easel die. So let me show you what you need to do with the easel die. Now I'm using purpose so um, cardboard. So this is a cardboard from a packaging. I cut it out. However, because I'm not using the, they recommend that you use foam board. I don't have foam board. I want to make it very economical. I just have packaging. So what I have to do when I cut it out, like you see here, when you cut it out, I'm going to put this one together. Sometimes it cuts so well that it cuts through the foam cord. See? So you want to reinforce that. And then see how this is breaking apart? You don't want that. So usually what I like to do, let me show you what I do um, to put this together. When I cut this out, I go through the lines. See all these lines? I go ahead and put tape. Oops! See that? That was, I shouldn't have done that. So let's put that back on. And I am going to just put tape and then put tape on the other side. That gives it some nice reinforcement. Gonna take some more tape, put tape down here. That gives it some nice reinforcement. 
right here. Okay, I'm going to put tape on the top reinforcement for the top fold line. Okay, and then I'm going to, I always like to back it up in with two. So I like to make it double. Remember, we want this to last for a little bit. We don't want it to disintegrate on them when they take it home. We really want them to have something they can admire for a while. Um, so that's why I kind of take the extra step to make sure that I make things that may last for a little bit and doesn't break apart too quickly. Okay. So now that I have everything reinforced, what I like to do is I like to take um, my craft knife and then I like to take a cutting, um, cutting mat. I don't know where my green cutting mat is, but we're going to use this. This one is about the same. Let me see if I can find that cutting mat. I don't know about you, but whenever I start crafting in my craft room, things just disappear. Oh, here it is. Okay, I'm going to use this one. This I got it at the dollar store. It's perfect. This was a dollar. Great price. So then what you want to do is you want to cut. These are, the, these are the pieces that get cut away and this. So it's basically you're going to cut. He, this gets cut off. And this gets cut. Everything else should stay in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this. I'm going to follow the line. See here. And sometimes easier on the other side. Because you have a when you when you die cut cuts your paper there's a bevel edge and then there's a little sharper edge on the other side so find where the bevel edge is and that it makes it a lot easier to cut versus the one that is not beveled at least for me so and I you know you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing but you'll see the the end results so I go ahead and cut all this out and what I'm doing is I'm just cutting the tape away. Okay, then I'm going to make sure it opens and opens. So see how it opens here and it opens this way. So that's what you want. I'm going to do the same thing here. This even makes it more economical. You think about cereal boxes. Start collecting those cereal boxes and make to make an easel. And I bet there is some YouTube videos out there how to create an easel from scratch without a die. That may be also something you want to look at. Um, I found this die, so that's why I don't. I use this. Oh, and then you got to cut down here. This die was on uh, was on clearance from Hobby Lobby, and I knew I was gonna create projects for church. So when I found it, I immediately purchased it because I saw the possibilities for this die. Let's see. Did I? Yeah, I relieved that, and see, it's done. Okay, so the next thing is what you want to do is you want to double mat it. Now, I should have cut the die this way, so that way when I put these two together, like I did this, I was thinking ahead, and see, this is the same cardstock. It's just I, I thought ahead, and I went ahead and put, you know, back to back, so only the white will see, but uh, that's okay. So then... I'm going to go ahead and take some very aggressive tape. So I got my tape runner here, or this ATG gun. You can use adhesive. If you want to use glue, you can go ahead and do that. Um, and since it's, it's heavy duty cardstock, it's, it's 
it's bored, almost like bored. It won't warp. One issue I have, I want to make sure I do the, the right side. One wish, issue I have with um, with cardstock and, and liquid glue is that it buckles sometimes. So you have to be careful when you're using cardstock and liquid glue. I like my ATG runner because I don't have to worry about that. However, what you have to worry is to make sure you get it just right because is there's no forgiveness using this product. So, and see, I want to make sure I can see well. Um, top, bottom, side, okay. So there, done. And then notice that it's taped together. Again, I'm gonna have to release it. So I'm gonna go around it again to release it from the um, glue. Okay, that should have released it. Yep, it released it and see how nice and sturdy it is. I mean, that will go nowhere. It's not gonna crack on them. It is perfect for them. So I'm gonna put those two aside. I already went ahead and cut my, um, this is my basket. So I went ahead and cut that. Um, went ahead and cut cardstock because I want it nice and sturdy. So I'm gonna put those two together like so because I really want it nice and sturdy. And then um, this is going to be the rim. For that and I'm going to go ahead and um, let's go ahead and glue it together now this I can use so let me put this aside I'm going to use liquid adhesive for this one and when you do this for for wherever you're going to do it, you want to make sure you do as much of the prep work ahead of time. So you want to create the flowers ahead of time. You want to go ahead and create this ahead of time for them. Okay. This will be okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put some glue here, liquid glue. if I can get it out. And I'm gonna just make sure I get it from edge to edge, that glue. I don't want it peeling up. So we'll go ahead and put that glue down. And you want to put a heavy acrylic block on it so that way it will stay flat while it dries. I'm going to put that aside there. And then I'm going to do the same thing. This time, I'm only going to use two. I'm not going to make it two dimensional. Just going to use um, two pieces, one cardstock or heavy duty cardstock, and then the pattern paper. The other one had three. And I can wiggle it around, make sure it's nice and adhered. And I may have to use a different acrylic box for that one because remember, the other one has, this one has three pieces of cardstock, while this one only has two pieces. So I want to make sure it adheres well. Okay? So there you go. Now comes the fun part. So what I'm going to teach you is I want to take, you're going to need a scoreboard. I forgot to tell you that. 
you're going to need a scoreboard. And on, it doesn't matter on which side, I'm going to start on the long, the short side. I'm going to measure half an inch, go down, then at one inch, and then half an inch. And let me show you my prototype. You are going to create this. This is what we're creating. So you'll need four score line on each side. Four score lines, okay? This is what we're creating. So half an inch and then another inch. I mean half an inch here. So that's why it comes smaller because you're taking up two inches on each side. So it's going to make uh, everything smaller. Um, the middle part small. So half an inch here, one inch, one and a half inch, and then two. Turn it around. Half an inch, one inch, one and a half, and then two. Oop. Oh no. I went out of that one. So I want to make sure. See, I did a boo-boo, which you're not going to see it. I don't think you can see it, but I, I, I didn't do... I went one square over from the two. So if you do that, do what I did. I re-scored it to the right measurement. So I got to make sure I'm in the right track. Okay. Now we're going to do something here because I need to cut... Even though I do, this is number, this is the fold, you know, two inches. I need to go one, uh, a half an inch in from, on the long side, I'm going to go ahead and score two and a half, but I'm only going to score up to the second score line. So second score line, and that's it on each side. So here's onto the second score line. So that's two and a half, and over here, we're going to go nine and a half up to the second score line. Okay, I hope you can see that. So this is the second score line. Maybe you can see that. You see it there? So you want to go on the long side up to the second score line here, and then half an inch more. So you have one, half an inch, one inch, one and a half, two inches, two and a half. You're going to do it the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing on this side. So you're going to score at two and a half up to the second score line and then nine and a half, second score line. Okay, so now we need to create this little thing. So what you want to do is you're going to cut this one and this one and then you're going to go from this corner to this corner and score. Okay? So I'm going to bring this back over here and then I'm going to use a ruler Let me go ahead and use my ruler. And what I want to do is I want to go from this corner to this corner and then score. So I want to score that one here. I'm going to mark it so you can see it and then I'm going to score it. Or actually not score it, I'm going to cut it, sorry. No scoring, just cut. Okay, so you're going to cut this, cut this, okay, you're going to cut these, okay, so if you look at this, so let's bring this back, if you look at this, you want to cut this one, 
these squares. See how all these squares? So you want to cut this whole piece out. Then you want to leave this there. Don't cut that. You're just going to cut down the side here. Then you're going to cut all this up and then you're going to cut at an angle here and then cut those two. Because what you're doing is, this is what you're doing. You're creating that miter corner. So when you fold this up, so you do this first and then this is going to give it some reinforcement so when you miter the corner, it makes it nice and sturdy. See? So this angle piece right here is that miter corner. So I'm going to bring my um, craft knife because I, I have, it, it's easier for me to do use a craft knife. And I am going to go ahead and cut from here to here. Okay, so I'm cutting that. Then I'm cutting the angle piece. Okay, so there. Okay. Then I'm cutting Let's see, I gotta make sure I do it right. Okay. So then I this piece is gonna stay. So then I'm gonna cut here. I'm gonna cut here. So I'm creating the flap, then I'm gonna cut. So I created that flap here, okay? Then I'm going to finish cutting these out. And that's what I have, okay? So that looks like this piece right here, okay? So let me um, show you again. So you have this, so you're going to cut out this piece, you're going to cut out, let's see, these pieces, you're going to cut out this piece, this piece, so you're going to cut this, leave that, and, and then cut these pieces out. So you're going to, this whole piece right here is what you're going to cut. Okay. You're going to leave that alone. You're going to cut it at an angle there. It's going to cut that piece. So that is what you're cutting. Okay. You can use scissors if you want. I just find it easier with a craft knife because with scissors, I I don't know, it just was bending. Trying to get into these corners was a little harder for me with my scissors. And then you release that, see, and then cut this piece. There you go. Okay. Gonna do, and it, it, you know, for me, it helps me go ahead and mark things off. Like, um, this is staying, this is going, this is going, this is going. So before you cut it, make sure you want to mark it if you like. And then I have it already here. Um, right here. Oops. So mark it. 
double check, triple check, make sure that's what you have. And then before you cut it, make sure that you are cutting the right score lines. But it's always paper, so if you cut it, like um, I have a prototype. That's why I created this one. This is my prototype that I go back and refer to because um, it's sometimes it's hard to, to keep it in, you know, what you need to cut out and it helps to have a template. So that's kind of my template. Now I haven't cut a, I haven't created a cut file in my scan and cut. It might, it might be good to do that. I haven't taken the time to do that. Um, maybe I'll do that one of these days and then create a scan and cut image so that way I can have my scan and cut do the score lines and the cutting for me and it'll be easy. Okay, so there. I can mass produce these. Just put the cardstock in and have it cut away. And then, uh, I didn't cut this, so cut that. Okay. Now comes the form. So eventually, let me show you what you need to have. So have, I pre-cut my easel. I pre-cut my um, planter. I have all my flowers pre-cut, ready to go. I have my hot glue ready to go. And now for the background. So you, what you're going to do at this stage, this is what you're going to bring to your craft event. You bring a bunch of these already cut out and ready to go, and your flowers. Then now is where the fun begins. So you're going to go ahead and um, you can either leave, um, use like clipboards. I already have the tape here. And what you want to do is you want to tape it off for them because especially if they're new to watercolor you don't you want them to be successful so you know you can put that here because they're not going to color this they're just going to cut color the inside area so I'm going to go ahead so if you can see here let me bring it up see I don't know if you can see that I'm going to put tape along the last score line on each side. So the last score line here will have tape, like so. The last score line here, and I repurpose the tape, but you'll, you use fresh tape. I'll go ahead and tape that there. Okay, like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and put tape right here. So you can use, I've used before um, form cord from the dollar store. I've also used as a mat, so let me show you what else you can do if you want to make this project very economical. I got these, let me get these real quick. These things are from the dollar store. They're actually the cutting mat. As you can see, this has been from another project. I tape. I would tape this on here. I will have them all stacked up and then I will bring it to the craft event like that. But I have this under my desk now, so that's why I used it, but um, very economical, you can do that. 
okay now we're going to get some watercolor so I'm going to bring the watercolor that I have for the ladies so that way you can see how it'll come out nicely without really expensive watercolor okay so these are the watercolors I like to give them even though it's you know it's not the expensive kind it works out wonderful for them and then I have brushes similar to this I have these containers I eat a lot of yogurt so I save these because those are my water tubs for them again very economical and then I just wet the background so I'm going to take a big brush I do have big brushes from the dollar store in a container that I bring but for this I'm just going to wet the background so teach them to wet it not too much just a little okay and then they can even use that brush I do have bigger brushes I'm going to go ahead. You want to have the you want to teach them how to wet their palette. So I wet my palette. And then um just put it in the background like this. Very easy for them to do. Don't have to get too crazy. And see, these watercolors are good enough for classes. You don't have to buy really expensive watercolors. Just give them what you have. Then I'm going to take some green, some yellow, I mean, some blue, put it in the background. Like that. And remember, the frame is going to be like that. So, the I, you know, um, it's going to be this way because that's where my pot would fit. So my pot is going to fit this way. If you put it this way, you don't have enough for all the flowers, but this way is perfect for my flowers. Okay. Oops. Making a mess here. Sorry about that, guys. And then maybe some greenery down here. Need a little bit more and the edge is blue right here teach them not to use too much water little goes away I haven't put my brush in any more water I just did like that and then um, if you want you can give them paper towel to make clouds and teach them this technique that they can dab up and it makes kind of nice little clouds like that okay I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. Usually, by the time they're talking with each other and they're just having a good old time, it dries up. Usually, we do it. We're in Arizona. It's very hot. So, things dry pretty quickly. But because I'm in my garage, I'm going to go ahead and um, dry this real quick. And we'll be back. The other thing you may want to teach the ladies is to peel at an angle. Usually, that's what I teach them to peel at an angle like so that way it doesn't tear the paper and because this is re I repurposed this tape that's why I like repurposing tape it loses some of the stickiness so it doesn't tear my paper it just have enough tack what I need but it doesn't mess up anything and see now it's still a little wet so I'm going to go ahead and dry in the back it does buckle a little bit but don't worry about that it'll be fine so dry it from the front dry it from the back
and that will help flatten it out if you do it on both sides and because you use watercolor paper it doesn't buckle it won't buckle as as bad and since it's still kind of um, hot I can always lay something on it like that you can lay a book have some books have them lay it down put it aside because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stamp a saying on here and we're going to finish this up I think it's nice and dry so I'm going to go ahead and ink the edges because I do like my edges ink and I am going to look for I think I do have this dressing ink right here um, you can use a foam I have foams like this here which you can cut and use you can also use um, from the dollar store just sponges that will also work but for for now for for this I'm just going to use this um, right here and then I'm going to ink and give it a nice distress look so I'm using um, vintage photo And I want to go ahead and use a little bit of, um, let's see what other, I do have another brown. Okay, I'm going to use some archival ink because I want to put some more darkness on, the, on one side. So this is going to have a little more dark and see like that just a little more darkness so what I want to have is like the light is reflecting this way okay and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with this one So on this side, I'm going to make it a little darker, and at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and make it a little darker right here, because it's going to be like a shadow. Now I'm going to take some of the archival ink. Just put it on the bottom and on top. And you see how that looks. That's going to be placed, that's going to look nicely like that. Okay. So the next trick that we need to do is we need to stamp our saying. And I want to go ahead and put um, a saying in there. And I think this time I'm going to use with God, all things is possible. And I want it right in the center there. So let me go ahead and get my stamping platform because I want to make sure that it's nice and dark. And I may even emboss it. So that might be a good idea to emboss this thing. So here is my stamping platform. Um, I'm going to have to make sure, let's see, like that, make sure that I tape it a little bit. That's why I like to take some of the stickiness off my tape and repurpose it because I'm going to tape this right here at the edge because I don't want it to move. Okay so I had to put this on first because I want to make sure I put this right where it needs to be. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I got black acarval ink. And I'm going to go ahead and use that. And it's probably going to need to stamp it a couple of times.
Okay. And you know what? I may emboss it. So let me let that dry. So I'm going to use this. This came with a mineral base powder and you can refill it. So this is perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of that on top. Like so. Okay, and then I'm going to get um, my embossing powder and then I'm going to get my embossing ink. Okay, so I got my embossing powder. I got my ink. This is just Versamark. So I get a nice impression there. Remove it. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring this over. Not bad. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this back in the jar. Yeah, you don't have to do this, but because, um, and notice that some of the embossing powder went on the edges there. I like that, actually. It makes it distressing, like distress. I'm going to heat up my heat tool. And just dry it. So there, see how nice and dark it is right now? It did it bow a little bit my my vase, but that's okay. Well, whatever this is. But see how I really like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and add this here. So let me go ahead and put my stamp away. Now what I will recommend that as soon as you use your stamps, I have lost a lot of stamp in this in this garage because I don't put stuff away when I'm sometimes when I'm making things. So go ahead and put your stuff away before you lose it. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere that here. Um, I think I'm going to use some liquid glue. Might be good. And then put it back on. Put that away. I'm going to put it back onto the acrylic block. I'm going to put these away. Tidy up my room as I go. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and place this on here. And then put my block back on. Now let's look at this. Oh, that looks pretty nice. Pretty nice. Something that I'm going to do, you can either teach them to splatter paint for background. Mine, see this this brown or um, this is actually was made with wild, wild honey. I want it like a little distress in the back. I have a wonderful stamp that I bought some time ago, which I hardly ever use. And it's this one from Tim Holtz. And it's this stamp right here. I'm going to use that. I bought this some time ago. Like I said, um, you know, you want to use what you have. Don't go out and buy things. I bet you have a stamp that is similar to this that you can use. There's no need to buy extra stuff. I'm going to go ahead and get a, a acrylic block. There you go. And then I'm going to use vintage photo. Oh, see some of that. You want to make sure there. I don't want it to get stuck on the block and then it pulls paper. I don't want it to pull my paper off. And you know, you can you can stamp it around like so even though if it goes over 
because that's going to be hidden. Okay, I like that. Go ahead and clean this and put it back where it came from. Now we're ready. We have all our pieces. We're ready to burnish everything. I apologize for the length of this video, but I just want to make sure that I gave you ideas and tips and, and went through the whole process. Now, because this is watercolor paper, you really got to make sure that you fold it over and burnish the edges. And you can do this, you, you know, you can give the ladies or your students, you can give them a plastic knife and they can use the back of the plastic knife to do your the bone folding. You can also use a popsicle stick. That will work very well. But anything that you, you need to give them something so they can really burnish these things down. I have used credit cards before, old credit cards or old gift cards. That also works well as to work as a burnishing tool. But um, I'm using here one of these um, Teflon um, bone folders, and, and that's what I'm using to fold this over. I'm going to use this acrylic block. We need something that they can put at the edges to, um, to angle it. So when they put it together, you need something. You can use a regular block. You can even use something like a piece of wood. Let me see if I have some, you know. If you have extra wood like this, you can use it for them to use for the corner to make that 90 degree angle. Or you can just have them share an acrylic block. They can take turns to, to do this. So, I can use liquid adhesive. I can use my ATG, which is what I'm going to use here. For your class, you can actually use this tape, a nice strong tape, and just have it ready and they can, they can peel it. So you can put the tape on ahead of time and then they can just peel it when they're ready to put everything together. And that's how I'm going to do it when I'm in class, when I bring this to for the project. But right now I'm just going to use this. There we go. Now, what you want to have handy is your glue because, and then you want to make sure this bends, these bends. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring this over like so. Okay, there you go. And then I'm going to fold this over like so. And the trick is you put this edge to this edge right here. So I'm going to bring that edge. So this one. I'm going to actually bring it up. Then let's put some adhesive before we do anything. We're going to put some adhesive on this tab. An adhesive on this tab. Adhesive on this tab. Adhesive on that tab, right? Going to bring these up and then Bring this in, hold it, and then let's make sure we have a nice, there, see a nice angle? There's a nice angle there. Nice angle here. Make sure we got a nice angle. Yeah. And I think I put glue. I don't know if I put glue here. You need, oh, I think I forgot to put glue here. OK. 
Okay, so we're done with that. This one we're going to bring these flaps in. We're going to put glue on here and on these two. Glue on here. So we got glue on there, glue here. And then push it down. Just make sure you let the adhesive take hold. Okay. While this is taking hold, the adhesive is, is um, drying. I'm going to go ahead put something flat on there. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I got these, the reason why I put these strip of paper is because your hands, especially the ladies, they're probably gonna have all inky hands, watercolor hands and stuff. That transfers over to the frame, so what I'm going to do is I have mirror cardstock. You can get this at Michael's. They're pretty economical. I got a, a 30 for a very good price. Um, first of all, I'm going to cut my butterfly. Because I want a butterfly here, so I'm going to put that aside. And then I'm going to take and cut half an inch strips. I love this trimmer. It's from Cricut. You can get it at um, Walmart for about $13. And I love it because it has a half an inch marking on the other side. So I get perfect um, half an inch What strips. you can do to make it easy for the ladies is you can measure from here to here and then cut your strips. So let's go ahead and measure. So I need an eight inch strip on each side. So I'm going to take these, you know I need, the glue is not working so I'm going to put some of this glue in here, it's my, my, that double adhesive did not work very well, so just put some glue, so if this happens, don't worry about it, just put some regular glue, it was not sticking, maybe I didn't put enough glue and then let me bring it over here put that and let it dry okay so we're going to cut two strips for eight inches so oops eight inches strip actually this one I'm gonna do it this way Eight inches, another eight inches, okay, and then this strips is, let me bring my, um, this one five and a quarter. Actually, five and one eighth. So then you're going to cut this one five and one eighth. And five and one eighth. Okay. 
Okay. This time I'm going to be smart and I'm going to use this. So you can have it all prepared with this type of tape with um, score tape. I think that's the name of this stuff. And make sure you put you don't have extra score tape on the edges peeking out. So that's okay. When you put the score tape, make sure you align it well. Or you can use a thinner score tape. Set that aside. So now let's see if this dry. I think it's nice and dry. So that's going to go here. That's going to go here. Then this is going to go here. So we're going to measure. Then you're going to help the ladies measure from the bottom and then cut at an angle. So we'll do that later. Okay, I think I'm ready to compose my frame. So I'm going to put that there. We're not going to put, I don't think we can put this yet. Um, this one. We might be able to. What is flat? Let me experiment. Okay. Let me measure this. So what I did is I got the center of the frame here. So I'm marking the center. And then I'm gonna get I'm gonna mark the center of my easel. And it's mainly the flap. There's a flap that you adhere to the back of your piece, which is that flap right there. The mistake that I did with this is that I put the easel flush, the bottom of the easel flush with the bottom of the frame. And then when I did that, the frame is more at a up, more upright angle than on a more inclined. So if you want your, your frame to be more at an inclined angle, you want to go ahead and not place the bottom of the easel right flush with the bottom of your piece, like I did here. You just bring it a tad up a little more maybe one eighth of an inch and that should do the trick. What I'm trying to prevent is I put the easel after the fact and see how it buckled a little bit. I don't want it buckling. I want it nice and straight. Let me make sure I didn't mess that up. No, it doesn't look like it's messed up. Make sure, yeah, I can move this. And I can move this down. Perfect. It looks, yeah, it looks even. So see, and it's no buckling because I make sure I put, I placed it after the fact. And then, so you can um, assist them with doing. You're gonna have to assist them to do that. Okay. So now that I have that, let's go ahead and start composing our flowers. At this stage, they are ready to compose the flowers. So what you want to do is just 
give them all the pieces. They will go ahead and um, actually you're going to use your prototype and you may want to create a frame yourself so that way you can give them a little bit of guidance of how to start the composition. And usually you want to teach them to start putting the foliage, the stuff in the background is going to be a here first um, before you go ahead and start adhering the pot and then the flowers on top of the pot. Um, you can give them hot glue or you can give them glue. So I recommend you give them a tube of just regular glue, liquid glue to put in the foliage because there's there's so many open spaces in the foliage that if they use hot glue, they may burn themselves. So I usually give them a combination of liquid adhesive and hot glue to make their pieces. And, um, and then when I give them the hot glue, I put it at a lower temperature because I don't want people to get burned with the, the hot glue. Like you see here, this is a nice big piece, so I will use hot glue. And then um, for the foliage, and then for the flowers, you can also use hot glue because they're not going to burn themselves. And then you're going to just teach them not to be afraid. Just put flowers there, look at the composition, um, just arrange them, and then just commit to it. One of the things I noticed that some of, some new crafters, they take too long to commit to a layout. So you want to help them not to be fearful and just commit to it because you can always add an extra small flower you can always add a little butterfly and it's going to look good regardless however they do it it's going to look beautiful so and these projects are to have fun they're you know you don't want to make it very stressful for them just have them have fun here and now the last little bit i'm going to do is a butterfly then I decided I want to put some more leaves. So these little tiny leaves, I'm going to put it just at the bottom. And notice I burned myself. So again, maybe these tiny little leaves, we want to give them just regular adhesive to adhere them. Because you don't want them having a bad experience with a craft, especially like this. So now I'm going to go ahead and put some flowers at the bottom just to kind of simulate that, you know, there, there, there are some flower, some buds that fell to at the bottom of, of the frame. Let's mess it up. So there is my frame. Oh, we didn't finish. Okay. So now we're going to peel the adhesive off. And we're going to go ahead... Now put in the, 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 these liners of the frame, it may be a little tricky for them, but you just teach them to put the two sides first. And then once they do that, you want to go ahead and teach them to miter the corner. So you're just going to lay it on first and then measure the corner there, like I'm doing that with a pencil. And you may want to do it for them. And then cut it at an angle. And then once you do that, you just peel the adhesive that's why it's so nice to have it pre-adhered with the adhesive in the back with the double-sided tape because they just mainly need to peel the adhesive and just tape it back there so um really simple if you want to have them cut ahead of time you can with the miter corner the only problem you may fall it fall into is that the frame may not be exactly the size that you need, but that's okay. I mean, you can always do that. And as you can see there, I made a little boo-boo. I made a mistake, but I'm just going to leave it be. That's okay. I did not cover it all the way through, but that's fine. It still looks good. And there. It stands up pretty nice. And there's that one, and here's the other one. Very nice, and you, you you know, now I have two. So you can use any type of vessel that you want. I have also a, a vase that I can, I was thinking about using, cutting some of those out. But whatever you have, you can go ahead and use that to create your frames. So there you go, and I hope you like this. Very good for classes, um, very good for church events, whatever you want, or even just to have fun with your friends. 
So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on the next episode of Scrappy Maniac. Thank you.